Hi, everybody, and welcome to another 10-minute tip from me, Michael Hoffman, from the OSINT Curious Project. We're going to continue with our Linux command line or terminal skills here by introducing you to some and some just um, deeper types of uh, commands that we can run using some of the same tools we've already learned about in previous videos. Uh, last time we learned about the CD command, the CD command allows us to change directories. Um, here I'm on the desktop. In the desktop there's not many things, so I'm going to tell the system I want to go back a directory. Now in Linux, to go to the parent directory, we type CD dot dot. And you can see that the desktop is now removed from my prompt, and now I am back in the main part of my home directory. So moving into a directory, cd desktop, and moving back, cd dash dash, or dot dot, sorry. Um, there's another little trick here that we can run, cd dash will get you to the previous directory. So if I was in desktop, boom, cd dash, and I'm back there. This helps out when you're in a uh, deep directory like user, local, bin, and you want to get back to your home directory, you can just type cd dash instead of um, moving and typing in the entire thing. Also, on the command line here, there's a whole bunch of things to make our jobs a little bit easier. Uh, things like command line completion. For instance, if I, let's see, cd, I want to cd up a directory, and I know there's a directory there called documents, but I'm a lazy person. I don't want to have to type out documents. I can type do and tab tab, and it says, and then the bash prompt says, oh, you've got documents and downloads. Which do you want? Well, if I type a c and type tab, then the system will complete it for me, and I can save a whole bunch of typing. Uh, this doesn't so much matter when you're dealing with like documents or downloads, but if we look at in this directory, we have a file called weareosyncurio.us helping the osync community. It, it, that, that's a long file to type. If I had to type ls minus l, uh, we, and, and do all that, it would be a long time, uh, a long uh, typing. Not only that, in the Linux command line, you do need to escape the, that's what these slashes are, spaces, or use quotes to tell it, hey, I want all of these things together. So that's CD, um, CD dot dot, and we could do CD dot dot a lot. We can type CD dot 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 dot, and then do an LS, and you can see that we are at the root level of the directory. We've gone above our home directory. We can also use that LS command to do LS slash home slash tester slash there. Oh, there we can see into that directory. So we can give it a, a directory to look into. We can also do other things like if I only want to see the text direct and the text files in my home directory, I can hit uh, ls slash home slash tester star dot txt. And now you see that we have two files there that are showing up. If I cd back into home tester and I run the same command, removing this part here. I see I get those files. And again, if I type ls minus l for those, I just get the information for that. Uh, it's a lot easier to start using these wildcard characters like the asterisk here to limit what comes back to you rather than doing an ls minus l or worse, an ll and seeing, oh, well, where are my text files in here? Well, they're right there and that's all you needed. So we can uh, use those star characters. For instance, if I wanted to CD into documents, but I don't know how to spell the rest of it, I can hit a star character, and that star will allow the uh, bash prompt to come in it to finish or complete what I'm doing there. Okay, another uh, helpful command that's a really simple one is called clear. Boop, that clears your screen just in case you wanted to to start fresh and make it look really nice there you can also do that using some uh, control characters as well all right well let's take a look at this document in here we have this we are osin curious uh, web page it's an html file 
and it is this number of bytes long, 132,446. Now, before we do that, let's just take a look at this. Uh, humans are not, uh, we, we think in kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, not in bytes. So let's transform this. Let's do an ls minus lh and, oops, sorry, lowercase h. And you can see that now this uh, file size here has changed to 130. K instead of 132,446 uh, bytes. So again, we, we talked last time about doing ls, double dash help, and looking at all the switches and flags there. And one of them happens to be uh, go ahead and ooh, h is make the file sizes human readable. All right. So uh, this is a big file. And I am not going, I, I want to show you how to look at it. We have several ways to do it. We can cat the file or um, take a look at it there. Um, by doing that, we are just telling the terminal to show us everything in the file. This works really well with text files like this. This is a HTML file, as you can see. And you'll get all of the content that was in that file now downloaded onto your, or uh, displayed in your terminal. And there's a lot of stuff in there. Sometimes we like to go page by page. We can do similar commands instead of doing, we can type more, or we can use the command less. <laughs> um, we, the older command is more. If we do more in that, then it shows us one screen size at a time. You can see at the bottom here, it says more, 0%. If I hit through here, you can see that I'm pressing the space bar and I'm going page by page, or I can hit the enter key and go through there uh, line by line. Uh, we can also do searching and other things with these commands. Uh, I'm gonna hit the Q to quit out of that. Less is the same type of thing, um, but it has a little bit more functionality to it. Again, spacebar moves through. We can move up and down. We can hit the page up key and the page down to also move through the file. So less is more than more, <laughs> if you can think about it like that. Now you see also we have this little colon prompt here. Those of you that know about the VI or the Vim editor, you can enter in uh, VI and Vim commands there, but that's way beyond the scope of what we're gonna get into for this basic, basic thing. To get out of this, we're just gonna hit the Q key and get out. So to look inside of a text file, cat, more, and less. But let's say we wanted to search inside of a file um, to search inside of a file, we can use the grep command, G-R-E-P. Now, if we just want to look for something like the word, oh, I don't know, OSINT, inside of, well, let's see this. We'll make it capitals inside of that file. What we can see is when we did that command, which was grep, and then the string we want, in this case, capital OSINT, inside of this file, um, it found a bunch of places where the word OSINT was located in the file. And grep is great for text-based files. Uh, this one's a little bit cumbersome because there's so many different things inside of here. Let's do this. Let's uh, cd up a directory and let's cat our emails. Now, I made this file. It's just a test file here with a bunch of simple email addresses. Let's go ahead and use the grep command to see if we can pull out certain content here. Now, the grep command has a double dash help menu or, or help feature that allows you to look at many of the commands that you can run, the extra switches and flags you can add there. For instance, we can turn on line numbering or we could only show the matching content. Uh, we can look for things that is case sensitive or case insensitive. Um, let's go ahead and grep for the word test in e the file emails. Here, you can see that there's four strings that were found with the word test in it, um, it out of the entire file. And it extracted just these two lines here. Now, again, we can do other things as well. Let's uh, go ahead and do the same thing. We're just going to hit the up arrow here. Instead of test, we're going to look for example. There you go. We have uh, five entries here. 
And we can do things like give it a flag to turn on line numbers. Ah, oh, these entries here were found on line number one, three, six, seven, and eight. Um, so in the next video, we'll go ahead and show you more ways to use grep. It's a very powerful tool. But that's all my time for this session. I'd like to thank you for listening and just remind you to please stay OSINT curious.